Today, we're going to continue in what we were having a look at with vector equations of lines. And this is one of the, like, this is the big idea that we kind of left off from last time. Uh, we, we started off with the Cartesian equation of a line and we thought, oh, we know what the Cartesian equation of a line looks like in two dimensions. Can we just extend it like we have been doing into three dimensions and we found it didn't quite work the way we hoped. It gave us a plane instead of a line and then we realized, um, as you can see up the top here, if we used vectors in our equation, that was actually kind of a sneaky shortcut for like every vector, like u and v in this uh, equation up here. Each of these really disguises three equations, right? There's an x and a y and a z component in the u, and there's an x and a y and a z component in the v. So what we, uh, what we sort of concluded was, maybe I'll, I'll sort of write it like this. What we've got here is the vector equation, and what it's doing is it's kind of um, standing in front of three separate occasions, which we call, do you, do you remember um, what it starts with? It's, uh, sorry, what it's called, it starts with a P. Ryan, you can turn your mic off if you want as well. <laughs> yeah, the, the question was, the question was, the vector equation, which you can see here, this is a, a vector equation for a line. Um, it's actually a shorthand and it's, abbrevi it's an abbreviation for three separate equations, but we gave them um, names. Um, we called them the something equations and it started with a P. Weird word, we don't use it very much. Um, yeah, very good. Thank you, Mrs. Isles. These are called the parametric equations and the, the parameter within parametric equations, it's this, um, it's this variable here, theta, sorry, theta, uh, lambda. I'm thinking of theta because the other example of a parametric equation that we've actually seen before um, is for the unit circle. So I didn't talk about this last time because we had so many different ideas, but I just want to kind of review it. It's a very important connection to make. So uh, you don't have to draw this, but I, I find it helpful. So maybe you just want to sketch yourself a really rough one, right? When you think about um, the, say any circle in fact, but I'm just going to use the unit circle as a simplified example, right? You can define any point on the circumference of the unit circle with two coordinates, an X and a Y, right? But we know that we can also express the X and the Y uh, in terms of the angle measured from the positive X axis, right? So if that angle is theta, then the X coordinate is going to be um, can you help me remember? What's the x coordinate on the circumference of the unit circle? Yeah, very good. That's cos theta. And uh, correspondingly, it's sine theta for the y coordinate, right? So on the unit circle, the way we would say this is that theta is the parameter. Theta is a single um, variable that if you give me the theta, I can tell you what the x and the y are, right? And in the same way, if you have a look at the vector equation of this line, right? The lambda is a single variable that if, if you give me the lambda, I can give you the x and the y and the z by substituting into each of the parametric equations. So um, this was kind of where we left off, right? We were looking at this form, we saw the parallel, pun intended, with um, the point, gr sorry, the, the slope yeah, wait, did I say it right? The gradient intercept form <laughs> of a straight line, y equals mx plus b, though um, writing it as y equals b plus mx turned out to be um, an easier way to think about it. And there's the position vector which gets us on the line and the direction vector which tells us which way we're facing, okay? Now, because of that, um, this makes it different to the y equals b plus mx because in this, set up, there's only one y-intercept. A line only has a single y-intercept, a uh, straight line anyway. But in three dimensions, a line can have infinitely many position vectors. Like you can get onto the line at any point on the line and then you can face in any, um, in either direction and in any quantity, right? So in fact, you can end up having um, scalar multiples of v, including negative scalar multiples of v, and they will all give you the same line. So um, that was something that we had to watch out for, right? So this is the theory that we introduced, and what I want to do today is just very briefly work through a couple of applications of this, a couple of ways that we can use this, and you're going to encounter this, uh, you've already encountered some of it actually, in uh, the exercise we signed last time, and I just want to explore a few more today. So here's what we can uh, pick up. If you want to make a, a subheading for uh, today, let's have a look at how do we 
uh, express the line between two points or an equation for the line between two points if I just give you their coordinates. Um, so here's a sample, right? Now remember, um, we have infinitely many solutions here, um, but one of the ways that we can think about this, a very standard way, is to think, okay, well we've got A somewhere, we've got B somewhere, and the coordinates that we've got for A and B, they, they tell us where A and B are in relation to O, right? So if this is where my O, my origin is, um, I know what this vector is in terms of the coordinates of A, and then I also know what this vector is in terms of the coordinates of B, right? So what I really want is this vector here, AB, that's going to give me a, um, Think about it in terms of the language that we just introduced. This AB, is that the position vector or the direction vector? Which is it? Direction. Yep, that's the direction because the whole line, if I extended out AB, right, it would go like so. So you can see AB is facing in the direction of the whole line. And then when I think about what will my position vector be, well, I, I really could choose either, right? I could choose OA or I could choose OB, because A and B are both on the line by definition, right? Um, just because it's A, uh, I'm going to use it first. Morning, Sean. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to use OA as our position vector. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to find AB and make that my direction vector. By the way, you don't have to write this at the start, but I find it, I found it very helpful when I began because I would mix up my position vector and my direction vector and then I would feel really silly when I looked at the solution and I'm like, I got it right, I just switched it around. So this is the way that I'm going to do it. And of course, if you wanted, you could have made OB the position vector, you could have made BA the direction vector and you still would have gotten the same line, okay? So let's go ahead. Um, I don't really need to calculate OA because it's just, you know, there it is right there, really. I just have to translate it into the appropriate form. So really, I just want to work out AB, yeah? So AB, can someone tell me what are they going to write to start calculating AB? What would be your first line of working? I'd probably, I'd, uh, I'd probably write A over plus OB and then change it to the appropriate Negative OA. Yeah, fantastic. I do exactly the same thing. So I know that A to B is the same as going uh, via like a third stop, which you can literally see on my diagram over here on the right hand side. And so <laughs> let me turn my <laughs> phone down. Um, so exactly like you just said, that O, sorry, that AO is the same as take away OA and then OB is out the front there. And so now this allows me, very simply without keeping too much in my head, to write out what's going on here, right? Because you can see the components up above. So OB, I'm just going to write them down, negative 2, 1, and 0. And then, because I'm subtracting OA, I'm going to reverse all the signs that I had in the A um, coordinates. So that would give me plus 1, plus 2, minus 3. Are you guys okay with that? And by the way, I don't know about you, this is, this is actually how I write it. I write it in that order. I write all of the parts of B first and then I follow that with all the parts of A. Because that way I, I find that just easier to read them all at once and put them down the column. Okay. Alright, so what are we getting here? So if I'm doing my numbers right, that's take away 1, 3, negative 3. Alright, so I've got AB now, so I want a line, and like we saw before, we tend to write that as R. I'm going to put the position vector first, and then I'm going to add on lambda multiples of the direction vector. So what was our position vector again? Minus 1, minus 2, 3. Yeah, yep. fantastic. So I'm just reading that off from the coordinates of A, and then I will add, <clears throat> excuse me, lambda of the vector we just worked out. Negative 1, 3 negative three. That's it. Happy times.